chapters 241 through 250 of Bleach for the first time, and we're here tonight to talk about them. Lawrence, how are you? Oh, that was a delay. Uh, yeah, uh, I'm doing good. Yeah, another 10, another 10 chapters down the hole. All right. So to recap where we last left off, uh, Orihime has been kidnapped slash coerced by Ukiora into going with them to Huecomundo. Ichigo, Chad, and Uryu decide to invade Huecomundo to rescue Orihime, and Orihime, under Aizen's orders, has restored Grim Jiao's arm, which he celebrates with by uh, destroying Luffy and reclaiming his spot as the number six Espada. Correct. So what did you think of the Motley Crew's arrival in Puerto Mundo? Yeah, yeah, you know, so they they, they made it. They after you know, set it, after going through the the uh, pass set up by Urahara and they're um you know, they're on on their on their merry way for a noble cause to save Orihime and uh yeah, they, it, it all kicks off here. Indeed it does. So, uh I mean, what did you think of them arriving and then they are in the underground cellar, they're getting chased by some hollows and then they emerge in an antechamber to see who's been chasing them. They emerge in the, uh, is this, uh, yeah, they, it's, uh, wait, who, who was chasing them? Was it the, the three? Like No, this is the two hollows. This is the big one. And this, is, the other one is the one with the, you know, quiver. Oh yeah, 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 I remember that. Okay, now yeah, yeah. Okay, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, so that was interesting. You know, they were like uh, Chad and uh, Chad and Ur, you were like, "Let us fight." You know, mm -hmm. let us show you, you know, that you shouldn't doubt us at all because we're we're stronger than we ever have been. And, you know, and you know, I liked how the the fight went. You got to see like uh, Ur use new powers. You had to see Chad. Uh, you know, he strengthened up a, l a little bit. And uh, you know, and they're strategically, they're they're kind of starting to get in sync now. Like they kind of realize that their their um, abilities were better uh, fits for the uh, other Iran car. So they kind of did like a little swap, a little little tag out, and uh, you know, took care of business. Um, so yeah, yeah, definitely, uh, you know, definitely a good like showcase of how Uryu and Chad have improved. Yeah, when. Uh... When they realize that they should just switch opponents, they make quick work of uh, their respective R and cars. Uh, with the defeat of the two R and car, they are effectively the guardians of that entrance to Recomundo. The underground chamber collapses. They make it out of uh, the underground just in time to uh, spit up a bunch of sand, and they arrive in Recomundo, where they first gain sight of. Las Noches, which is the palace that Aizen and the Espada have taken residence in. Correct. So, um, after arriving, the are the Espada are summoned together for a little bit of tea. Mm -hmm. What did you think of uh, tea time? Tea time with the Espadas. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. So you know, they got the, you got you, you got to see them kind of discussing, you know, talking shop. Got this got to see all the the big power players. They, uh, they, they, you know, they learned, of course, that that Ichigo and the crew and company have uh, invaded, uh, invaded their 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 domain, and they kind of discuss like a plan of attack, and they ultimately just decide let 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 them come to us. You know, it, it's not worth, uh, you know, if they can make it up through all these trials and tribulations, they'll show up weakened anyway. Uh, you know, it, this uh, it's almost like a game to them. They're they're kind of viewing it as like a like this is like them watching like football or like sports like you know this is their this is their version of entertainment for you know they're, they're seeing these rats run through their through this cage so uh yeah uh yeah definitely set up like a menacing uh menacing uh vibe for for these uh for the espadas yeah let's uh let's zoom in on the image a little more to get your impressions so we'll get we'll play uh you know, you meet just a little bit of everybody here, but let's play the guessing game of numbers. Yeah. So we know Grim Zhao is number six. We know Yami is number ten. Now that you're looking at all of the Espada, who? What are your guesses for their respective numbers? Um, I guess far far, far, far left. I guess for, he's one. Yeah, for Ukiora. Yeah. Do we know his number officially yet? No. 
I'm gonna say one. Hold on, let me uh, let me type these guesses out. Okay, what do you think of the person to the right of Ukiora? I'll say three. You'll say he is three. What do you think of Neutra, who is the person to the right of that with the big dome thing? I'll say. I'll say four. Four. Then uh, to the right of him, the only female, uh, Aspada, what do you think of her? Uh, seven. To the right of her, the guy with the big dome head? Um, nine. All right. And then we have Yami, who you already know is 10. To the right, we have the man in the crown. What do you think of him? Uh, did I say five already? You, you broke up there. Can you say that again? Did I say five already? No. Five. Then the man with the glasses. What numbers do I have left? So you said one, three, four, seven, nine, five, and we already know six and ten. So you have two, eight. I'll go two. Okay. And then that leads by default the uh, the other man. Eight. Yeah. Okay. We'll uh, we'll keep those in mind in the future. So. Yeah. Uh, fun times. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know this, this is similar to uh, how when we first get the captains yeah and so we get them all seated here yeah that's a really good shot you know yeah uh let me just go back up in my notes mm -hmm. so we have tea time grim Jow wants to leave to eliminate ichigo aizen says no and aizen says business as usual wait in your respective uh, areas and if they come they come mm-hmm Neutra doesn't seem as interested in this idea. He taunts Ukiora a little bit about it. Um, but Ukiora uh, just reiterates what we kind of already know about the purpose of the plot to uh, trick Orihime into making it think like she chose to join them. Mm -hmm. uh, pretty meaningless stuff here because uh, she we hear in her inner monologue that her resolve is to really when she's summoned to uh, use her powers on the Hogyoku, Hogyoku, her goal is to reverse it to the state in which it never existed in the first place. Yep. Because, or he may have a plan, unlike a, a lot of other uh, more powerful people than her. So, yeah, we'll see. Uh, so we then get a bit of comedy here mm -hmm. as uh, the trio of Ichigo and friends, tries to make it to Las Noche, but they never seem to get closer, and they're introduced to the Great Desert Bros. Legends. What do you think of this uh, this fun grouping of people? Oh, it's not gonna... them. They're great. They're great. I'm, yeah. I'm already Team Nell, 100%. Yeah, Team uh, Nell the Masochist. Yeah, let's go. What do, what do you think their deal is? Um, Are these people just hanging out in the desert uh, playing games? Yeah, I mean, I guess they're just like lowly Iran cars that, uh, you know, just don't aren't don't cut the mustard enough to be taken seriously, and uh, you know, they're just kind of like doing doing their own thing. Not then they just have to run into Ichigo. Well, uh, they have some fun, great comedic moments uh, as they're riding the sandworm. Yeah, they get closer to the palace, and they are interrupted by the real guardian of the palace, a Aran car that seems to be made of sand. Their initial attacks don't really have any effect here. Um, but then Renji and Rukia arrive. Mm -hmm. What did you think of uh, their arrival here in Harkovundo? Loved it. I'm glad some Soul Reapers are show showing some some chutzpah, some sense. Finally, like they, they they you know they obviously knew Ichigo was going to go. Oh, disobey the orders of the of that was given by the 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 whatever Soul Reaper general or whatever. Like, like they were obviously like Ichigo was obviously not going to stick to like that 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 like that um that order. 
uh, yeah, so it's only sensible that they would go back up their their mans. You know, he's a, he's the friend. He's their friend. You know, Ricky said, "Don't make me ever ask that question again." Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, it's, it's I think it's been proven time and time and again. Um, he he did that for her, so she kind of owes him here. I mean, well, not really owes him because they're friends, so it should just be kind of like a you know a natural kind of like a you mm-hmm. know understanding. But yeah, so good good stuff, good stuff. So the the gang's back together to rescue Orihime. They break yeah. into Las Noches proper. They're in a dark uh, alleyway. Quick, go quick, down the court. Yeah. Quick thing. I just wanted to like, like you know, are you going to talk about like how they did a flash over to the reaction of like the the captains or whatever to? Uh, hey, say what you want there. I just want to say Yamamoto saying those fools. Come on, bro. He's saying, a, he's saying it in a fond way. He should no. He should he, no. He wasn't saying it in a fond way. He looked at, like he, he was saying going. It, those no, fools, those rascals. Like those fool. No, no, no. He, he don't. He shouldn't call anyone a fool. He should. He should. He should either be removed or step down from being the leader of of the Soul Reapers. He's doing a horrible job. He's the worst. I I'm offended that like no one. He, like he should. There, there there should be like um like called before whatever the Soul Reaper version of Congress. There should, should be, be getting, a uh, change.org petition. Yeah, there should be a change.org petition. He should be getting impeached right now. He should be sitting in front of the Supreme Court. Like, yeah, it's, like, he, shut up with these those fools, Yamamoto. Well, uh, Biakio is the one who helps arrange for them to go in the first place, uh, showing his concern. Legend. Oh, brotherly love. Legend. Again, like, again, someone's showing some sense in the soul. That's, that, I count... That's like five soul reapers that have like some sense in their in their brains. Okay, the rest of them can can go screw off. Well, they uh, they continue their way through the hallways of Las Noches and they arrive at a impasse where there are five separate paths. They vow to meet back together alive and split up. What do you think of them splitting up? Um. I mean, I don't like them dividing themselves. Like that—that that does that does not seem like the best plan, considering. Look, it works in the horror movies. Why right? we don't know? What yeah, to... it's a, like I mean, so you're five people, and there are ten espadas. If they like, just really wanted to like fuck your shit that, up. That's two espada each. That, so they could send two, two espada each, who are supposed to be like on their home on their home field. And they're supposed to be like twice as powerful as like any captain, and and you're gonna so you're gonna be fighting two two forces. There's a potential like the worst case scenario is you're fighting two people that are more powerful than any captain, and they also have these lower level spotters that could hop in if they want to as well. So you could be facing up to three or four to four spotters at once, with two of them being like twice as strong as a captain, like. I, so that's why I'm kind of like, that look, they, they made a promise to trust in one another and to meet back up alive. They, no, yeah, the, the, there's there. Well, there's making a promise and there's being a, a dummy. There's being there's being stupid. And there this is being stupid. I mean, they're they're fortunate that the Iran cars and Eisen are like so cocky to the point where they're kind of just like. Whatever, like, like they, they ain't worth shit anyway. We ain't even gonna take. Like, if they were at all cautious or at all like, anxious about like the potential of something bad happening here, they could have like de- like dealt with this in like a moment. Like, this is if if they fail here, this is the like equivalent of like blowing like the 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 Warriors blowing like a three one lead against the Cavs. Like, you're you you're so far out in front right now. Like, you could have just like like snuffed out any chance of a re- rebellion. And the fact that they're just so cocky, so arrogant to just like, you know, l- let let the the cards fall as they may. They could have like, if yeah, if they if they fail here, they deserve the L. That they might be even worse than the Soul Reapers, honestly. If they're if they're able to like fail, which they will likely do because you know this is a shown in manga. But <laughs> uh, yeah, not not a good look from from Eisen here. He 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 was so smart, doing so well. But you know, just just snuff out Ichigo right now if you're if you're really trying to like you know just think about it from his perspective. His his reasoning is, you know, would you really 
step on an ant with all of your full force. I guess, yeah. I mean, like he he himself no. was like working. When you on... when you see an ant and you're like, "Ooh, I need to kill it." Do you step on it as hard but, as you can? But okay, but think about this though. He's already expressed like worries that Ichigo is going to be like the the foil to his plan, like the ultimate. No, the but ultimate... but Ilkiora affirmed that uh, nothing to worry about there. But like, but even in the affirming of that, it was kind of acknowledged that if he does reach his full potential, he still could be like something that you like that you don't want to fuck around with like okay and, and, and the only like excuse okiora had to that response was like well if he does that then i'll just have to deal with him like it's going to be like have to be my responsibility and you're kind of giving him like the tools the tool set here to like get powerful because the, the quickest way for a soul reaper to get powerful is to fight equally powerful forces and win and then, and then, like, increase, like, their ability of using the soul energy and their, like, own strategic abilities as well. So, I don't know. It seems like you're, you're really kind of, like, setting up Ichigo for, like, the best possible scenario of, like, of, 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 of getting out of this. You know, like, I don't know. I, but I hear what you're saying in terms of, like, uh, that's what I'm saying. I think they're just being cocky. I think they're just being arrogant here. But, uh, and it's understandable in terms of, like, you know, they they, they really they severely underestimate them, and they, and they think they're they're like an ant, and they're a giant shoe, of course. But yeah, just as uh, it's uh, not the best look. Yeah. So the uh, the party splits up to go their separate ways. Nell follows Ichigo. The others uh, get lost and try to follow Nell. We don't yeah. quite know the outcome of that just yet. But uh, Jin and Hosen have been keeping tabs on all of this. And uh, they remark that they've entered into the area of the Fallen Espada. Mm -hmm. And uh, Ichigo meets one of them, the Baron, yeah. and uh, seems to be unfortunately underestimating him. Right. And that's where we uh, leave off. So my question is, is like, how is Tosin looking at this? Isn't he blind? Uh, he, he's, he's using Miyatsu sensors. Okay, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. Oh, so uh, well, let, let, let's end things with the volume 28 poem for Baron's lecture, Full Course. Yeah. My lord, we look at you as we might look at a peacock. You are framed by something sublime, similar to hope, worship, and fear. I'm good. Okay. <laughs> I'm well, good. Uh, you're you're pretty. You have like two chapters left in volume twenty eight. The person on the cover is Dordoni Alessandro del Socaccio. Oh, I mean, real quickly, we forgot to discuss the fact that the that he's the reason he's that is because he was a fallen soul, re, a fallen espada, and that's why he's given that number. It's like because you're thinking like one oh three. Oh damn, he must he must be not worth any a, a shit. But mm -hmm. oh, that's why he's one oh three. And then you know, each you seem pretty shocked by that. Yeah, he's at least was once powerful enough to be in a spot, uh, not powerful enough anymore. Yeah, he was like, "Don't judge a book by his cup by by their cover, Nino." Call him a Nino. Um, yeah, Nino is like his catchphrase. Nino. So tomorrow you are going to finish the last chapter in volume twenty-seven, and you're going to enter volume twenty-eight. But or sorry. Volume 29, The mm -hmm. Slashing Opera. It's cool name. Yeah, it's a cool name. I like it. Yeah. And you will, yeah, so you uh, you will finish Volume 29 entirely tomorrow. Um, we'll get in there. Yeah. Uh, what, was, what am I feeling on my, okay. Mm -hmm. I was just feeling something on my shirt all of a sudden. Yeah. All right. So, uh, yeah, anything else you want to, or... No, I think we got it all out. All right. Well, thanks, everyone, for tuning in. We'll see you tomorrow for another uh, fun edition of Leech Society Breakdown. Thank you very yeah. much, everyone. Have a good one. Bye.